Okay. Organic cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> Definitely. And tomato sauce. And tomato sauce, very important. Today we're gonna cook some soup. No, just kidding. We're gonna do uh, some lost PLA casting. This is Aaron. Aaron has brought these over. He's making game pieces for is it some cool game, right? Yeah, it's a Viking board game. It was mm. like the strategy game in Europe before chess became popular. Mm. So it's got lots of different names depending upon where Can in Can you Europe. give us one of them? I don't know how to pronounce most of them. Okay, Viking <laughs> old chess, pre-chess. If any of you in the comments are bigger nerds than me, write down some of the names. I'm sure you'll figure it out, maybe. He's trying to make the parts, the, the game pieces, and he wants to cast them eventually out of bronze, different alloys and stuff. We're gonna do some practice ones in aluminum. This is the second round of practice. We did not record the first, which is good, because it didn't work. It was a failure, but the burning out worked. If you remember the first time I tried to do lost PLA casting, the burnout failed, and then the pouring failed, and it ended up being a bust of someone who looked like they were mauled by a cougar and it didn't work. But hopefully this will work. No promises. Fingers crossed. Fingers and toes crossed. And I don't think I have anything to add. Are gonna, we're gonna burn it out in the furnace. I'm using the forge burner because it's less powerful. I, I simmer on low until it stops boiling. I'm boiling out all the water. Uh, not only is there water in the plaster, but there's, uh, there's like chemically bonded water that you wanna bake out and uh, it takes a while. So we're gonna do that and then Standard heat up aluminum, pour it in, and go from there. Hopefully it works. Wish us luck even though you're in the future and this has already happened. And no one's gonna hear anything that we're gonna do from now on because that furnace is loud. Do you believe these things came with such a piddly low flame? I had to break it open and modify it just to get that much. <laughs> you're kidding. That is, that's how modified. Do you, how do you modify it? So it's got this This segment has been removed because lawyers exist. Right. See? Told you it was loud. So Aaron prepared these molds. I, I hadn't seen them ahead of time. I wasn't there to prepare them. So I don't really know all the details, but I can guess. So this might be wrong, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Uh, so this test, we, we used bigger gates and he vented some of the things, although I don't think all of them were properly vented. I, uh, I don't know where we landed on that, but we, we went ahead anyway because weather was nice. I think the patterns and some of the gates were printed in PLA, although I think the, like, he used like a wax cone looking thing, maybe, for the in gate. Uh, not, not super sure. I should have asked, but it was a weekend. My brain wasn't up to full speed at that point. So the way I burn these out, I can fit three of them at a time in the furnace, and he had six. So we did two batches of six, two batches of three, yeah. Two times three equals six. I know math. I put the burner on as low as it would go. Like I can stick my hand right over the hole and it, it, it was it was warm. It was mildly warm, but it wasn't burning hot. At some point it started kind of boiling. Like there was water that you could see boiling. I probably should have had these upside down, but I really just didn't want the the goop to like melt into my furnace and then burn out. I, I, I don't know why, because I ended up burning out anyway. Oh no, oh no, camera problem. I, I, I slowly heated it to burn out the water, then I got everything kind of up to like glowing temperature. There, the plaster was glowing a bit. I figure if it was glowing, that was hot enough to burn out all the PLA. The uh, plaster was just straight plaster and it was in a can. The, the tin cans were for strength because I, I probably overheated them a bit with the burning out and the can sort of held it all together. Sort of. I say sort of because I may have gotten them a little too hot and perhaps running a little lean and it basically blowtorched the cans away. After removing them, I, you can kind of see the uh, the can crumbling under the, the the channel locks there. I think I think I I think I burned that can away. But after after letting them cool a bit, I had them upside down and I blew into them with a little bit of compressed air. And that does it blows a lot of the ashes out because the PLA does leave ashes behind. And you don't want ash like in your stuff. And after I, after we kind of got that good, I stuffed a crucible full of aluminum, put it in there, and cranked it up to max. The idea was uh, I wanted it to slowly heat to burn out the PLA and boil the water so we didn't blow up the water and have like a steam explosion or something like you get in the kiln all the time. But I wanted the aluminum to melt very, very quickly. And that's in part to uh, prevent a, a lot of oxidation because if you get it hot and molten and pour right away, you don't have it molten for a long time. You don't lose a lot to oxidation. 
I also thought, I used to think that you didn't want a lot of hydrogen to dissolve in it because of porosity, but I've watched a lecture recently that kind of calls that into question. Not that hydrogen forms porosity, it totally does, but like there, there are lots of other reasons for porosity. But more on that next week, I'm getting ahead of myself, that's the next video that's going to come out, is about that and casting gingery parts and whatever. But when we got the aluminum melting in this, what I did is I, I put a grate on top of the furnace and set the cans on top of that upside down so any other bits could melt and fall out. I'd also preheated them, so it, well, they were already pretty hot. It kept them really hot, really, really hot. So when I poured in the aluminum, the aluminum didn't, like, hit the cold plaster and then freeze right away before it filled the game pieces. That was a plan, anyway. We shall see if it worked. I also tried uh, light salt, the flux, is it called? I, it's been so long. It's, it's supposed to make the aluminum a little more fluid. I have I actually stopped using it. I totally stopped using it, mostly out of laziness. But I'm sure there were some logical reasons to stop using it as well. But that's the, the light salt is the sodium chloride, potassium chloride mix, supposed to make it more fluid. But who knows if it works. The pour is pretty interesting. A couple of the things started to bubble. And I first, at first I thought that I had just covered up the vent holes and it was air escaping through the vents up through the aluminum, but it kept bubbling. So I think I didn't fully burn the moisture out. And some of the moisture was turning was like flash boiling and bubbling out of the, the plaster. That or some of the PLA was in there. I didn't get all the, the crud, the burned PLA out of there and it was boiling or something. I don't know. If you want to know the details, I'm the wrong person to ask. I just screw around until things work. All right. We won't know how they succeeded or not until we open them up. But they're still liquid. So they were hot enough. Let's see. Oh, hey. What do we got there? Focus. There we go. Cool. Those kind of worked. That is, wow, that's hot. <laughs> Just breaking them out and cleaning the plaster off took a long time, and, and we ended up talking a lot about completely unrelated things. But one cool thing you can see, anyway, is that the cans just crumble right off. It's, it made me made me feel like a man to break steel like that. The bucket of water is... I, I will recommend that in all future deplastering kinds of things. Just submerge it in water and it cleans right up. Alright, here's the results. Got a lot of them that worked, a lot of them that didn't. Some of them uh, look a little more unhappy than other ones, like that one. So uh, what I think happened with some of these, this is directly under... See, we poured them like this. This is directly under the opening, so all the crap that was pouring down with the initial burst of metal got mixed into that one, and less so in the other ones. I don't know what these little lumps are for. There they might have been air pockets. There's... Maybe air pockets in the plaster? They might have been. One thing you can do, I think, with the plaster when you're, when you're pouring it, you know, pour it in, smack it a couple of times, cause air bubbles to rise to the top. Can, can prevent some of that, or you can just dremel that off. It's not a big deal. And then we can even see the, the print lines is printed in PLA, correct? Yep. Cool. Some of them didn't go in. Now I know this is not a heat problem because we had plenty of heat. The metal was definitely hot enough. I don't know why we didn't flow into the pointy tips. I assume they're all pointy, right? Yeah, they're all, they're all pointy. Hmm. I, I think that might have been because it wasn't uh, any place for the air to escape to. Perhaps. Oh, good point. Because I, I forgot to add those with these. The vents, yeah, vents. I think I think vents are more important with plaster because the sand that I use over there will vent air, but plaster doesn't so well. One of them. This guy here. All the parts are similar, but there's one king, and he has these extra little doohickeys on the top. That yeah. piece, unfortunately, came out kind of sad looking. It yeah, looks. I, I put. I made two of them just in case one didn't turn out, but I think the other one was probably on here. Oh well, at least well, at least kind of got one. This one, it looks like maybe the plaster cracked, and that's where we got these little flashing lines. Yeah. That'll probably come off with a Dremel. I mean, yeah, it, I think I can clean it up. It's, it's kind of sad looking, but not that bad. <laughs> it's supposed to be an old game, right? The it's parts, a very old game. The yeah. parts look old and, and like like they were on fire at some point. <laughs> and that's that's cool. We're calling it a feature. It's, a, it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's not a, not a it's, casting defect. Gives it's, it an authentic It's look. ambience. Yes. That's, that's what casting <laughs> defects are, ambience. So, yeah, I think this will turn out. I don't know how many pieces you got. Some of these are only half work. Yeah, but, I'll, I'll have to clean them up and count them out. But not bad for a test, eh? Yep.
Yep, he's happy. That's good. We got to play with fire. Of course he's happy. Oh, yeah, and what was the thing called again? You looked it up. It was like uh, Henna Huffle. Henna Huffle was like, that was like the Norse name. But then there's like, uh, there's lots of different versions with different names. One of them, the latest uh, version that we have the most complete set of rules to is called like uh, Tableau. Okay, there you go. I do not know how to spell that. 